Satisfied. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to show a short minute video to give you an idea what I do out in the street. And I've been taking these videos uh, many, many years. And I got a bunch of them. It's uh, five minutes at the most, six minutes at the most. And um, hopefully it'll encourage you. The first video I'm going to show you, just one today. It's about a uh, father and son. The son, his name is Jason, and he's a, a uh, drug addict, heroin addict, and the father is a, uh, an alcoholic. And they both live under a bridge. I know the father uh, many years, and uh, he's been having these problems almost 10, 15 years to my knowledge. And his name is, his name is, actual name is Tom, I call him Tim. Uh, don't ask me why I call him Tim. I guess that's when the first I met him, he introduced himself as Tim. So um, let me give you, bring it up to date a little bit about this guy. The father was heavily drinking before I took this video. And what happened was he was so blown away that it was hard for me to talk to him. So uh, eventually after a couple of weeks went by, I got him off the street and I put him in a program in Baltimore. And uh, I guess about a week or two later, he bolted out of there. And uh, I was told that he left. So I went back out in the street and got a hold of him and brought him back up. And he did that again. I, I think he did it three times. And uh, each time I went to get him and brought him back. I think the third time around, he called me up, told me what he did. And I brought him to my apartment, and I had him sleep there that night, and then I took him back up to Baltimore. Uh, right now, he's still there. This video was taken probably in 2015, not quite a year. And I think you'll enjoy it. Um, so, welcome to my world of ministry. Okay. Okay, you could talk. This is Reverend Tony Tono. I'm under a bridge here in Annapolis, and I have a, a father and a son that are homeless. Uh, one's name is Tim, and the other's name is Jason, the younger boy. Uh, how long have you guys been under this bridge? Two months, roughly. Two months? 
Yep. Yes, sir. And how long, has, Tim? I know, I know you almost 15 years at least. Yes, sir. How long? How long you been homeless? Me or him? Been, Tim. I've been homeless. I. For 15 years. 15 years you've been homeless? That's not true. He's, he's been homeless for about two and a half months. Now? But he was homeless years ago? Yes. Right. So he's maybe figuring out a quarter, uh, approximately 15 years all told? About half of that time within the past okay. 15 years. So you're talking about seven, eight years? Okay. Just to be true about it? Yeah. And how long you've been homeless? Uh, about two and a half months. Two and a half months. And do you like living under this bridge? Uh, I lived in a tent for about a month. And if I don't have a solid house, I'd say this would be the best bet if I was homeless. Okay, and why? Um, it's an actual hard structure. It's pretty much out from under the weather. Yeah, well, you pretty. You got the heat just. We got he heat goes right up under that bridge. Got it made under here. Yeah, the heat goes right under that bridge really? and it stays there. Believe it or not. Uh, let me focus on Tim a little bit. Tim's been drinking heavily in the last couple of days. Yes. And yes, uh, he's he's not quite coherent. Uh, <laughs> but I remember one time I'm going to repeat this because I repeated it a couple of Sundays ago when I first met you again. That one day uh, you were thinking of taking your life. You remember that at all? Yes, sir, I do. And uh, I absolutely do. What was that time? That was. And that was Weedy. Yeah, you were at Weedy Boys. You remember Weedy? Yeah, you were at the taxi cab you, company. You asked me a question. Right. And, uh, and I couldn't remember it. Well, right now. And there the, the, was Weedy. Right, thank God right now you're still alive. And you're with your and son. I am. Yes, I am. How long, how long ago did you guys meet up? Uh, about a month and a half at the shelter. Just for hot lunch randomly. Okay. And that was strange. <laughs> I've told you guys, and I guess I told your father many times, that Jesus is the only answer. He's the only one that's going to change your life around. You're right, Dave. You're right. And you know, and what you need to do is continue going to the church down the street to at least take a shower and get to meet the people. But you got to get off the street. You got to get some shelter with the cold weather's coming in. And that's what you need. What I want to do also is kind of take a little scan of, of the area that you're living on there. Okay, just just hold off, guys. Uh, just want to take a little scan of the area. This is the bridge you're living under. This is this is the water down in here. Okay, There's, those are your bikes over there. Yes, sir. You got two bikes. And yeah. Jason, I believe you you're living under here. I'm gonna take a walk. Yeah, this is my room, I guess you could say. There's a lot of rocks here. I gotta be careful I don't bang my head on the beams. Yeah, I just can... keep one hand on the beam. That helps a lot. That's what I'm doing right now. This is Jason's area where he sleeps. A little more organized. A little more organized, you could see. And this is his father's area here. We just came from. Uh, just want to let you know, there's a lot of rocks here. There's a lot of danger. They could fall and split their heads open. No, no. I understand you got a rat that lives under here too. Yeah, just just one, thankfully. One rat. You could get rid of that yeah. thing, you know, with with bleach. You put bleach around, and he'll, he'll he, go. He away. took our mouse trap two weeks ago. He took. Oh no, actually, the squirrel took our mouse trap two weeks ago. Sorry. The squirrel. Okay. We used yeah, to have yeah. a a mentally challenged squirrel, and now he's gone. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I'm trying to hold my balance here on the rocks. I'm trying to steady myself. Uh, just got to be careful when I walk. I don't fall. Need a hand? No, I'm okay. I'm going to end here. And I want to thank you guys. And you know where I'm at in case you need me. I'm over at the Stanton Center on Sunday. Tony. Tony. God bless Tony, you guys. Tony. Stay out of trouble, eh, please? Yes, sir. I hope, I hope you get your lives together in the name of Jesus. So God bless you, Jason. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, you Tim. Journey. Take care of yourself. Tony. What do you think? That's my job. 
I've been doing it for almost 30 years. I got some other ones, uh, I guess uh, three, four star ratings. I got women on there that I've met out in the street. Um, it's been a rough ride for 30 years. But what I'm gonna talk about today, I'm gonna talk about faith. Now I know you've been over it probably before, but I'm gonna give you a kind of a different side of it the way I believe it should be said or taught. But first of all, I wanna say this. I wanna dedicate this sermon to Mike Siddons. Since I'm not gonna be here tomorrow for his graduation, I'm dedicating this sermon to him. And I want to thank you uh, for you know, being here and uh, going through the whole program. And uh, hopefully tomorrow you'll have a great graduation. And uh, thank you. Thank you again, uh, thank Mike. You. Let's open our Bibles to uh, Hebrews 11. Eleven one. Now I've been studying faith since day one. Uh, I guess you guys have been taught you never have enough of this. Always remember, you never have enough of what ministers are going to teach you. So just be patient, be attentive, and you're going to receive it into your spirit and just keep growing on it. Just keep growing on it. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. What does anybody know what that means? Go ahead. It's just the belief in it, having a belief without uh, it being proven. You, if you don't see it with your eyes, you know, believe it without seeing it. Yeah, with don't, your eyes. what you see is, is not faith. Right. Okay. Let's say uh, you have a sickness and you're uh, coughing and sneezing, like I, Evan was doing this morning a little bit, this kind of weather does it to you. I would go and look at God to heal me. I mean, there's nothing wrong with going to the doctor, okay? Because that's what they're there for. Um, but your trust and faith should be always in Jesus, not in the doctor and in the medicine he gives you. Always remember that, that's important. And you're going to see eventually, you keep repeating it, and you keep reading the word, you keep going over these faith scriptures, and I'm going to give you a few of them. Uh, eventually, you're going to overcome your situation. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be uh, you didn't have enough money to pay rent, uh, you need a car, whatever you need. So it's up to you to trust in God. But let me keep going here. He says, for by, two, for by it men of all gain approval. By faith we understand the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen is not made of things which are visible. So God called the world and the earth into existence. He spoke it in Genesis. If you read the book of Genesis, uh, he's going to teach you there. Let there be light, let there be uh, trees, let there be uh, earth, let there be animals. You talk to the animals. So there's all kinds of things that God spoke into existence, and that's what you could do. Speak your healing. Speak your money to pay the rent. But that doesn't mean you don't, you don't go to work, okay? You go to work, and if you don't have enough money, you, God's going to give you, he's going to reward you. I don't know how it's going to come to you, but he, eventually he's going to reward you, and that's what you need. You need to trust in him. Ephesians 2 eight says, for by grace we are saved. For by grace we are saved. It's not of your own doing. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Two Corinthians. Two Corinthians four eighteen. Go to 2 Corinthians 5 7, sorry. 5 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. So, what we see, and we see our sickness getting worse, we don't see enough rent money. Uh, 
or we don't have enough expenses in our pockets. Let me tell you a little story what happened to me one time. And again, this goes back years, so I, I kept building up on this, kept building up on this. I had no money. I lost my business, I, I lost uh, my family. I never was an alcoholic, I never was a drug addict. But I knew enough not to do those things when I was growing up. But what happened was, I was working this construction job, and I didn't have enough money to buy lunch. And I keep confessing my faith and trusting in the Lord, and hopefully things will turn out where well, he would give me enough money even to buy lunch. So the superintendent of the job wanted me to go back by the stream. I wasn't building houses, I was building warehouses, big buildings, okay, uh, three, four, five story office buildings. Um, but there was a, 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 a little ravine in the back that was building up of silt. And he wanted me to go back there with a shovel, just, just by myself, and just scoop the silt up and just get it out of there. So I went back there and I kept, you know, trusted in the Lord. And I didn't know how this money was going to come to me, but I kept trusting in the Lord. <coughs> and all of a sudden, as I'm there scooping up the silt from this little stream, I see this bill come floating by, coming out of a drain. So all of a sudden, I took my shovel and I put it under there, I picked it up. I don't remember now, it was a 10 or $20 bill. <clears throat> See, God will get you your money. It doesn't have to come to a per from a person. He could put it, wrap it up in a, in, a, in a bag and put it in a dog's mouth and have it come to you. You don't know how it's coming to you and when it's coming to you. He's ex you have to exercise your faith. You have to keep trusting him. He wants to know where you stand. He wants to know what your position is. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen to you, but it happened to me, and I kept working at it, and I seen these little miracles coming into existence. It just blew my mind. So 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, we walk by faith and not by sight. Remember that. Just because you don't, you know, you expect, you think if somebody's going to come over and hand you a $10 bill, a $20 bill, uh, you think, you know, you, you, you're walking along. I found money just walking along the street. When I needed it, I found money. Somebody put money in my Bible. I was at a, at a meeting one time, and I needed money. I have had people pay, give me money for rent without, without asking them. You don't, you don't have to ask anybody for anything. All you got to do is ask God. That's what you need to do. Now, my whole ministry is predicated on not asking anybody for money for myself. I might ask people for money for other people, and they get the money. Okay. Just recently, I had a, a family that I had two babies that were out in the street. One was a year old, and one was like uh, two. And they were living in a hallway. And God put them in front of me for me to help them out. And that's what I did. And God opened the doors for me to find a place to stay. It's very difficult to find a family a place to stay, especially with children. You got to understand that. You got to trust in God. God is the only answer to the world's problems. I don't know what else is. The world doesn't accept God. It's, it's unfortunate and it's a shame. Let's go to Romans 1. Romans. For, I'm reading from uh, Romans 1.17. Got that for it, it, it. The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, but the righteous man, the righteous, the righteous man shall live by faith. In order for your faith to work, you have to be what? Righteous. You have to be righteous. Now, you can sit back and think, you know, you got it and you know it all. You don't know it all. Because I don't even know it all. I've been doing this for 30 years. You don't know it all. You need to pay attention to what the Word of God is teaching us. It's so important. 
You have to understand that. Sure. Romans 12.3. Well, um, if you see something going on, well, I'll give you an idea. He's asking me, uh, I give him a definition of righteousness. I'm going to tell you from my own experience. I used to work for this car dealership. I used to drive cars. It's the only way I made money. Right now, I'm on Social Security. I get a check. I don't have any trust funds. I was driving cars for this dealership, and I would go out and buy cars. I would DX. Anybody ever heard of that? DX, DX and taking a car from one place and bringing it to another? Okay. So I would go, like, all over the country, picking up cars, uh, dropping them off, uh, and driving. I drove all the new cars. It was a great job. So they would give me a check, maybe 50000 60000 depending on the car I was picking up from another dealership. So one day, they, they would sign the bottom of the check. I, know, I knew the owner, and I still know him, and the son. So one day, the owner wasn't around, and the son wasn't around, and they, they forged the owner's signature on the check, and I knew they did that. Do you hear me? I knew they did that. So they came to me with this check, and they said they wanted me to go pick up this car, maybe in Pennsylvania, I wasn't sure where it was. I told them no. I sacrificed my job because they could have fired me right there. So I'm not going to pick up the car. I gave him the check back. I said, get somebody else. But I told him in a nice way. Because I told him, I said, the, the person that signed this check isn't the right, the right signature. That's righteousness. Even if you have to give up your job, okay, even your life, because that's what Jesus did and those apostles. Remember that. It's so important. You understand the definition of righteousness now? Yes, sir. Always be right up front. 